Today we're going to be doing a fun experiment. In fact, this is something you can even do at home with your kids if you like. We're going to be testing the pH of a number of different household products. I have salt, sugar, baking soda, detergent, grape juice, vinegar, lots of different things that you could find around your home. Chemists normally determine whether something is acidic or basic or neutral by using an indicator. Indicators are chemicals that change color at different pH values. We've been talking about pHs in lecture, so now we're going to see it in action. There's lots of different indicators that, that chemists use, but there's one that's readily available to everybody, and that is cabbage juice. All you need to do is take a head of this purple cabbage, and we're going to chop some up, put it in the blender, and blend it up for maybe 30 seconds or a minute and we're going to end up with this lovely purple juice. Cabbage juice has the very interesting property is that it can change a lot of different colors depending on the pH. This little strip here shows the different colors that cabbage juice changes from a pH of 2 all the way to a pH of 12. It's especially colorful above a pH of 7. We've got purple, blue, green, yellow, lots of different pretty colors. And since cabbage is readily available, this is something you could easily do at home. You don't need fancy equipment. If you have a blender and some glasses or cups to mix things in, you're good to go. So the first thing we need to do is to chop up some of our cabbage. So we're going to take, we'll just make a small amount for our demonstration today. So we'll chop up the cabbage. I don't think I'd ever make it on the show chopped. I'm not fast enough. But we've, we've chopped up some cabbage here. So we're going to put that into our blender. And then we'll add to that some deionized water. It's good to use deionized water because it's perfectly neutral. We'll just add enough water to cover the cabbage. That looks good. And then we want to put a cover on top of the blender because otherwise it will spray purple cabbage juice all over the place. Unfortunately, our blender is missing the lid. Hopefully at home you guys still have a lid there, but we're going to sort of make a makeshift one here with a rubber band. Now this is going to be pretty loud, so I'm going to start it up and then we'll pause the video while we let this run for 30 seconds to a minute. So we'll start it out on low here. So we'll take a break for a moment, let the cabbage juice finish winding up, and then we'll come back and continue. All right, I think that's enough. Ooh, let's turn that off, it's pretty noisy. Now we have this lovely cabbage juice slurry in here. Looks like a purple smoothie. We're going to have to remove the cabbage solids from the juice. So to do that, we're going to use a filter. Basically, all you need is just a paper towel. You could do this at home with a colander and a paper towel, and it would work perfectly well. So we'll go ahead and pour our cabbage sludge in here, and we'll let the purple juice drain through. Oh, you can see it's a very lovely color there. We can speed it up. We'll simply take our paper towel and just sort of squeeze it a little bit. There we go. We've got quite a bit of juice there. So we'll take our funnel, set it over here, and now we have our cabbage juice. So we can use this cabbage juice to test the pH of different materials. So for example, let's start out with some vinegar. We'll put some vinegar in this cup. And now we'll add a little bit of cabbage juice to it. Ooh, and you can see it turns a lovely red color. The red, of course, is on the acidic end. The pHs below 7 are red in color, which tells us that vinegar is an acid. And you probably knew that already anyway. Again, if you're on chopped and they want acid in food, they often use vinegar. Now, we can also try something that's going to be basic, like ammonia. Ammonia is a household cleaner, and as we learned in class, cleaning products are usually basic, 
and food products are usually acidic. Vinegar is a food product. It's in salad dressings and things like that. Ammonia is a cleaner, and let's see if it's really basic. Oh, and look at that lovely color. We get this nice green color, and that green color, according to our chart, is probably somewhere in the ballpark of a pH of 10, so it's pretty basic. It looks like our vinegar is down about a pH of 4. It's quite a bit on the acidic side. So in the lab today, you guys are going to be testing a bunch of different household products, and then by comparing the colors to our little color chart, you'll be able to come up with an estimate for the pH values. You'll be testing a total of 10 different household products. I've got them all laid out here and getting an estimate of the pH. In fact, if you look in the lab book, in the table it says approximate pH because it, the, you can't get a very precise pH value with cabbage juice, but it gives us a pretty good estimate. After we finish with the 10 cabbage juice tests, we're going to go ahead and test five samples using a pH meter. This pH meter is very accurate. It'll read out to the nearest tenth of a pH unit very easily. And all we have to do is simply take off the cover on the pH meter and immerse the pH meter into our solution and it will simply read out the pH. So it's very simple. This, of course, is not something one can easily do at home. So we're going to be testing Coke and Diet Coke and then you can choose any three of these other samples you'd like and those three will give us an idea of how the pH meter compares to the cabbage juice. So we'll see if your cabbage juice estimates come out close to what the pH meter tells us it actually should be. So let's head on over into the lab and we'll get to work. The first sample we're going to test will be 7-Up. So let's go ahead and add a sample to the test tube. Now we'll add just enough cabbage juice so we can clearly see the color change. And it looks like it's formed a lovely reddish color. So I'll leave it to you to use the color chart and determine what the pH is. Next, let's take a look at vinegar. So we'll add a sample of vinegar to our test tube. And then a squirt of cabbage juice. And it looks like we're getting a lovely red color again. So use the color chart and come up with your best estimate for the pH. Next up, let's test the sample of ammonia. Already you don't have to make it easy to see. bit of cabbage juice. Ooh, and this time we got a very lovely green color. Next up we'll be testing grape juice. You'll notice we're using white grape juice because the purple juice of course would be too difficult to see the color change. And that pale yellow or amber color will not cause us any problems. Now our requisite squirt of cabbage juice. And we have a reddish color. For the liquid soap and the remaining materials, which are all solids, we're going to have to dilute those in water. So I've added some deionized water to the test tube and we'll just add a small amount of the liquid soap and then we will dissolve it. It doesn't take much because the amount of water in the test tube is very small. Just think about how much soap you would put in your sink if you were washing dishes 
and we only have half a test tube. We'll go ahead and stir that around to make sure the soap is well dissolved. And then we can add our cabbage juice. And it looks like we're getting a lovely green color. Next, we'll be testing a sample of sugar. I've already added some deionized water to the test tube, so let's go ahead and add a small amount of sugar. We'll then need to stir it to make sure the sugar is dissolved in the water. And then we can go ahead and add our cabbage juice. And it appears that the color has stayed the same. Next up, we'll be testing some baking soda. I have already have the water in the test tube, so let's just add a small amount of the baking soda. We'll go ahead and get that stirred up to make sure it dissolves. And then we'll go ahead and add our cabbage juice. Ooh, and this time it's formed a very lovely blue color. Looks a bit like robin's egg blue. Now we're going to test some table salt. So we'll add a little bit of salt to our test tube. Go ahead and stir that around to get it to dissolve. And then add a bit of our cabbage juice. And it appears that much like the sugar, the color has remained unchanged. I used to use vitamin C ascorbic acid in the experiment, but we've switched that to citric acid. They're very similar compounds, and we just happen to have plenty of citric acid around. So let's go ahead and add a small sample. And we'll get that stirred around to dissolve it. And now add our cabbage juice. And it's forming a very lovely red color. We're going to wrap up our cabbage juice tests with some laundry detergent. We'll add our usual small amount and go ahead and stir that to get it dissolved. And now we add the cabbage juice and we get a very lovely sort of teal green color. So that wraps up all of our cabbage juice tests. Now we're going to move on and work with the pH meter. Now we're going to start our pH meter tests. The pH meter normally gives much more accurate results than cabbage juice. You can see the pH meter right now is at a neutral value of 7. It's in a buffer solution, which keeps it at a pH of 7. So to test our first sample of Coke, we'll rinse the pH meter off in some water, place it in the coke, and give it a moment to take a reading. And it appears that the pH is 3.4. Next we'll test the sample of uh, Diet Coke for comparison. So once again we'll rinse off our pH meter, put it in the beaker of Diet Coke, give it a moment to uh, steady, and it looks like we have a pH of about 3.9. Okay, next we'll test a sample of 7-Up for comparison. So once again, we'll rinse off our 
pH meter, place it in the 7 up, give it a moment to balance out, and it looks like it's pH of 4.1. All right, our next sample will be a sample of sugar, which I've dissolved in a little bit of water. So we'll rinse off our uh, probe and put it into the sugar water solution. And it's got a pH, it looks like, of about 7.1, 7.2, so pretty close to neutral. Our last sample will be ammonia. So we'll rinse off the probe, place it in our ammonia. Wow, looks like our pH is at about 13, so ammonia is apparently very basic. This wraps up all of the pH measurements for our experiment. So go ahead and use the data that you've collected to answer the questions at the end of the lab.